Partnership liquidation is the process of winding down partnership operations. This includes paying off liabilities, selling assets, and distributing the remaining cash to the partners. A liquidation occurs when a partnership goes out of business or ceases to exist for other reasons. The steps in the liquidation process are one, sale of assets, also known as realization. Two, division of the final gains or losses among the partners. Three, payment of liabilities. And four, distribution to the partners. Suppose that the non-cash assets of ABC Company are carried on the balance sheet of $65,000. This partnership has three partners, Andy, Samantha, and Kim. The partners share income respectively at 40%, 40%, and 20%. They each currently have $25,000 in their capital accounts, and the partnership's cash balance is $15,000. Assume that the partnership has $5,000 in liabilities, and the partners choose to dissolve the partnership because they no longer get along. Step one is the sale or realization of assets. Suppose that the partnership sells these non-cash assets for $75,000, creating a gain of $10,000. $75,000 minus $65,000. Step two is the division of gains. The $10,000 gain is allocated at the rate of 40% or $4,000 to Andy and Samantha and 20% or $2,000 to Kim. Step three involves the payment of liabilities, $5,000. This leaves $85,000 of cash in the drawer, the beginning $15,000 plus the $75,000 from the sale of the assets minus the $5,000 used to pay off the debts. Step four is the distribution to the partners. The remaining $85,000 cash is distributed to the partners according to their capital account balance. The partnership will then prepare a statement of partnership liquidation, which is a financial statement that provides a visual summary of the partnership liquidation. The statement of partnership liquidation reconciles the realization process with the other steps, division of gains, payment of liabilities, and final distribution to the partners. The statement of partnership liquidation essentially closes the partnership, which brings each partner's capital account down to zero. The first journal entry in the partnership liquidation process involves the receipt of $75,000 of cash in exchange for assets with a book value of $65,000, which triggered $10,000 of gains. The second entry, which involved the apportionment of the gain, is a bit more involved. We are basically reassigning the $10,000 of gains attributed entirely to the partnership to each partner according to their distributive share. The third entry involves the payment of outstanding liabilities. The final journal entry involves the closing of each partner's capital account in exchange for full payment of the remaining assets. All the remaining cash is paid out to the partners and each capital account is closed with a debit entry. What if during the realization process the final assets sell off at a loss rather than a gain? Suppose that during the realization process the assets were sold for $50,000. Since the assets had a book value of $65,000, the partnership now has to divide a $15,000 loss. The loss would be allocated based on each partner's distributive share, 40% or $6,000 to Andy and Samantha and 20% or $3,000 to Kim. The partnership will then still have to pay off its liabilities of $5,000 and finally proceed to close the capital accounts and distribute the final remaining assets. The first journal entry in the partnership liquidation process involves the receipt of $50,000 of cash in exchange for the assets with the book value $65,000, which triggered a loss of $15,000. The second entry, which involved the apportionment of the loss, is a bit more involved. We are basically allocating the $15,000 loss to the partners according to the distributive share. The third entry involves the payment of outstanding liabilities. The final journal entry involves the closing of each partner's capital account in exchange for full payment of the remaining assets. The remaining cash is paid out, $60,000, and each capital account is closed with a debit entry. 
There are situations in which a partner's capital account could end up in the negative, thereby triggering a deficiency. A deficiency is a claim that the partnership has against the partner. Assume that the partnership sold its non-cash assets with the book value of $65,000 for only $2,000, thereby recognizing a loss of $63,000. The loss is then divided up among the partners at their respective distributive share. Since each partner had a $25,000 capital account balance before the loss was allocated, and since the loss allocated to Andy and Samantha is more than $25,000, the result is that Andy and Samantha's capital accounts will end up with a $200 deficit. The partnership then proceeds to pay off its outstanding debts of $5,000, and finally proceeds to make a final distribution to the partners. At that point, the partnership only has $12,000 of cash. However, Kim is entitled to $12,400, while Andy and Samantha should each pay in $200 to make up their deficit. Assuming they both pay the deficit, the cash would go up by $400, which would allow the partnership to be able to pay Kim her entire capital account balance. The final statement of partnership liquidation would provide a visual summary of this entire process. The first journal entry in the partnership liquidation process involves the receipt of $2,000 of cash in exchange for assets with a book value of $65,000, which triggered the loss of $63,000. The second entry involves the apportionment of the loss among the partners according to their distributive share. The third entry involves the payment of outstanding liabilities. The partnership then journalizes the $200 payment by Andy and Samantha to make up their capital account deficit. The final journal entry involves the closing of each partner's capital account in exchange for full payment of the remaining assets. In this example, the remaining cash is paid out entirely to Kim to close her capital account. If partners with a capital account deficit do not pay the deficit, there will not be enough cash on hand to pay the capital accounts to the other partners. If the deficiency is uncollected, the loss will be divided among the remaining partners based on the income sharing ratio. The capital account system is the backbone of partnership equity. Just like a corporation would have a statement of stockholders' equity, which provides details on the composition of a corporation's equity account, a partnership prepares a statement of partnership equity, which illustrates the changes in the capital accounts during a given period. A similar statement can be prepared for an LLC, in which case it would be called a statement of members' equity, because LLCs have members, not partners.